whatsoever. Some guys at 18, 19 are just true studs. Some guys, it takes a while. I, I brought this up today on another show that I covered Ole Okun in Florida. He was traded from L.A. to New York to Islanders to Florida. Even in Florida, he looked like garbage. He was going to quit the league and essentially go back to Europe and play. And then all of a sudden, Mike Keenan gave him tough love, and he started to flirt with 30 goals. Then he hits 30, and then he becomes a perennial 30-goal scorer in Florida. And that was in his mid-20s. It, it doesn't all... It, right now, we are seeing flashes of what Paul Fenton saw in Kevin Fiala. And now it's just a matter of how patient can you be? Can he get the other warts in his game out? Or do you have to just accept that that's who he is? Uh, you know, will he score enough to to overcome the fact that in the third period he might throw a blind pass on his own? Um, and and that's what happened. I, you know that game that he got benched the other night, the game before Buffalo. I was I was stunned that Boudreau did it because I thought he was playing great that game. But Boudreau then with ten minutes left sees a blind pass in his own zone in a, in a tie game, and he just couldn't. He, in his mind, felt like he couldn't trust putting him out there. So, uh, but but you know, the one thing I'm seeing from Kevin right now is is certainly a player that has the ability to be a good one. I, I just don't know how great. I don't know if he's got the finishing ability that he's going to be a 30 or 40 goal guy, or if he's just going to be somebody that's going to you know get you 20 to 25 and show greatness some nights, but but really frustrate you others. So. That was a good, I thought that was a good question. Yeah. So, yeah. Um, well, I'll end with this. What about Dubnik? Oh, obviously struggling. I mean, uh, it's struggling. Um, right now, I think he's going to be away from the team. Uh, you know, hopefully everything's okay with what's going on with his. He's got a family matter that he's, he's uh, attending to, um, you know, which is obviously very, very concerning. Uh, they called up Kapanen today uh, as an, under emergency conditions to back up. Uh, tomorrow, and uh, hopefully everything's okay there. But in terms of his game, obviously uh, struggling. I, I put it together a bunch of numbers the other day, and in a story about you know that the numbers online his first 133 games with the Wild, he gave up four or more goals ten times. He's done it six times in 13 starts this year. In uh, 2016-17, in the first 28 starts of that season, he gave up four or more goals zero times. He's done it six times in 13 starts this year. In uh, in his first 156 games with the Wild, he had something like a 9.22 or three save percentage. Uh, in his last 156 games with the Wild, it's down to 9.11. Um, his numbers analytically are all at near nearer at the bottom of the league. Um, his numbers right now, save percentage, um, and Tony Abbott helped me out with a lot of this stuff. Um, his save percentage, uh, goals above saved expected, stuff like that are all on par with his last year in Edmonton and Nicholas Backstrom's last year here, which precipitated the need to go get uh, Doobie. So he's not playing well. Um, he, he's going to have to figure it out. So. I, I have a follow-up question. Do want to thank Tony Hoagland, H-O-A-G-L-U-N-D, your state farm agent. He works out of Champlin, and the best endorsement we can give him is he's handled my insurance and Michael's insurance for quite a while now. Tony Hoagland, H-O-A-G-L-U-N-D, State Farm. Hi, Talk North listeners. I wanted to let you all know about State Farm's new program called Quotes for Good. We partner with local nonprofits to raise money for great causes. For the Russo Suhan Show, I'll be donating $16 to the Jason and Carly Zucker Give 16 campaign that benefits the University of Minnesota Masonic Children's Hospital. When you call in, be sure to mention the show so that we can track the donations. You can reach us at 763-421-4900 or check out our website at champlininsurance.com. Before the family emergency, was their approach with Doobie, did, when a goalie of his experience is in a slump, do they work him hard? Do they just give him some time to, to decompress? What do they do? Um, I, I mean, what you would love is Staylock to take the ball for a while. He could continue to throw him in. Um, and I think that Bruce wanted to do that, but then they had the six-goal game in in, uh, in San Jose where he gave up four, Staylock. But, but at, that, at the game, at the, after the morning skate in Anaheim and after the morning skate in San Jose, Bob Mason worked with him a little longer than normal on the ice. And then after both games, you know, Doobie rode the bike and stuff like that. And um, so, uh, but, but not like overextensive stuff. A lot of video, um, things like that. So, um, you know, hopefully he, he gets better. I mean, the, the reality is, is that he is, what, five years older than when he first got here. And so very similar to Nicholas Backstrom. I mean, you know, people forget, especially younger people that maybe weren't 
paying attention to or old enough to appreciate Backstrom when he first got to the Wild. People forget that Backstrom when he first got here was a very, very good goalie. And but they remember him at the end. And the problem is when you give these you know goalies, especially long term contracts, they usually break down. I mean, Lundqvist hasn't broken down, but he certainly hasn't been the same goalie that he was ten years ago. And Jonathan Quick, we're seeing a guy that looks to be completely different. And this is one of the best goalies in the league for a long, long time. And so now Doobie, year five of a six year deal, you almost expected this. I mean, there's a reason why his contract backslid. Uh, yeah, he makes three and a half million dollars this year, which is nothing for a number one goalie. It's 29th in the NHL. Next year, he actually makes two and a half. So, you know, Chuck Fletcher knew that, but the problem is that's the that was if you remember when he resigned with the Wild, there was no other goalies. They had no choice. Doobie had all the leverage in the world, and so they had no choice. This is what they did to get him under contract at a fairly reasonable even cap hit back then at 4.333. Still in the 20s, 20th ranked back then, so he's never been uh, near the top of the league in terms of paid goalies. So we're just seeing a guy in the tail end of a six-year deal in his 30s that is starting to probably slow down a bit, like a lot of the wild 30-somethings, by the way. How's Eric Sinek playing? Um, good. I mean, he just can't score, but but he's playing really well. He continues to get under everybody's skin. So last night, Eichel just uh, lost his yep. mind on him. I think that was more of a frustrated player on a team that's won once in, in November that was getting trounced at home by, at that point, the 31st team in the league. And Eck uh, just took the punches and didn't drop his gloves. And frankly, Eichel's very lucky that McCauley and Morton didn't give him two minutes, five minutes, and a 10-minute misconduct. And uh, Wild had a seven-minute power play as opposed to four, including a major in that. So uh, but he's playing well. He's, he's um, you know, for the most part, he had the one mistake in L.A. where he just didn't go with um, Car- uh, Kopitar to the net off a of face-off play. Um, I thought it was Erickson Eck on the second goal, too, but I looked at it again. It was actually Cunning uh, that didn't stick with Carter. Uh, but, but for the most part, that line's playing really well, and it'll be interesting when Felino gets back in the lineup. If you take Rask out, does that move Erickson Eck off that line? Um, y- you hope not. Um, but, but, you know, what, what do you do? Uh, you know, to me, I would just probably pull Donato from the lineup. Uh, don't let Vicky intimidate you. Other people can come up and ask live questions as well. I know it's her mic, but she will share it with you all. So feel free to do that at any point during the show. Uh, we do have a deal with Bite Squad. The promo code is talk North, one word, all caps. That will get your first delivery fee waived after that. Go to BiteSquad.com, see what the deal they have in your area might be, see what restaurants they serve from. They make life really easy, especially in the winter. You don't want to drive around in the slush. Uh, they can bring food right to you. Bite Squad, BiteSquad.com, Bite Squad, the app, promo code TALKNORTH. Uh, what's up with Dumba? Uh, Dumba, I, I think it's pretty minor. Uh, it's nothing. I don't think... Uh I just don't think it's major. I mean, he walked in the locker room yesterday to get a wrap, a uh, turkey wrap right in front of us. That's norm- normally normally an injured player would try to avoid the media us uh, seeing him, and he he was just walked right in there and not only got the wrap, but he ate it right in front of us as we were interviewing St- Staylock. And then afterwards, when I was walking back to the press elevator, his uh, his Newport agents were all down there and they were chatting it up. Uh, didn't look like anything serious, so I think he legitimately is a game time decision. Um, against the Avalanche, and if he doesn't, for some reason, doesn't play in the Avalanche, I am, I'm told that he'll be on the road trip to Boston. Okay, let's have a few uh, Twitter questions from Zach Raskovich. If you were stuck on an island, could have two players, past or present, to keep you company, who would you choose and why? <laughs> two, wait, what? Say that again? If you could, if you were on a desert island, and you could have any two players, past or present, to keep you company, who would you choose and why? I don't think any player that I cover would want me to be on a desert island. That's not the question, company. though. We know that, um, but that's not the question. Um, who? I, I, I don't know. I mean... I mean two, two guys you like talking to. Yeah. Uh, probably Prosser. Um, I talked to a couple of guys today uh, that I definitely wouldn't mind that. Uh, uh, Ralston. Well, I talked to Ralston yesterday. Um, and I talked to Curtis Foster today a couple times. Um, Nick Schultz. Who else did I talk to yesterday? I talked to Veyu yesterday. Um, probably Ralston Foster, Prosser, Nick Schultz, um, Parrish. Backy would be funny. Boogie would be funny. Um, that's here. 
Trying to think. Uh, Florida, probably Niedermeyer. Didn't we say Luongo. two? Yeah. <laughs> so. Need to get you an abacus. Yep. <laughs> and we're not going to go into the Florida years. We don't have enough time. <laughs> yes, sir, Bert. Grab the mic. Okay. Um, first, listen to the podcast last week. The movie you were talking about, Peanut Butter Falcon. Oh, yes. Yeah. yeah. Excellent movie. Very, yeah. very, very, very yeah, good. Yeah, yeah. Um, so the question I had. That's Johnny Hawks is in uh, Peanut yeah. Butter Falcon. Played a bad guy. International. Yeah. Great guy. Yeah, he's a really good Great guy. actor. He is. So when it uh, looks like uh, people are talking about now the picking out of the hat for suspensions with the Hathaway three games today. Um, mm-hmm. You got Lucic, who got two for just walking up and punching a guy right in the yeah. face. He's a repeat offender. You had Felino, even though it wasn't deliberate, elbowed a guy in the chin, knocked him cold, and he got three. So yeah. what's your... Take yeah, you're thing. usually a first-time offender gets two. It yeah. seems to be the unwritten rule. This uh, Hathaway one was just disgusting. Um, I mean, one, I, he didn't just spit on the guy. He spit in his mouth. Yeah. It, it, like, but, like, the guy is just heinous. Yeah. Um, and I get it's an emotional game, and he just lost his mind, and he fell on the knife afterwards, and he was sucker punched by Gibranson. But, man, what a disgusting thing. Yeah. He, he so I, should, I, I, I don't want to... Um, so I ran into uh, one of the referees from that game at the at the front desk when he was checking into the Buffalo Marriott yesterday, and we talked about him like because he did that game, and I always love talking to West McCall. He's just he's just so such a great guy to talk hockey with. But he, you know he called that game. He so he flew from Washington to Buffalo. He did that game that Hathaway did, and he said it was just the weirdest thing because. Um, is it because nothing was going on in the game, and then all of a sudden Leipzig started running around, and then all may- mayhem uh, came out. But it's an interesting thing because in the rule book he says that there's actually no, you know, there's stuff like sp- pulling hair and kicking and things like that, but there's actually nothing on spitting. So he essentially had to just make up the rule, you know, like one he had to get him out of the game, but two he gave him a match penalty because it was bodily fluids, like intent to injure and. And the league obviously agreed with it because they suspended him for three games. But it was just a, it was a weird, disgusting play. Um, you know, I, I am not one. I've been in the NHL Situation Room in Toronto, and I've been in the Department of Player Safety in New York multiple times. New York three times, Toronto half a dozen times. So I have a lot more appreciation for the stuff that they do in there um, than, than maybe the average beat writer and, and certainly the fans that have never gotten to witness it. I know that they're all... Um, they are stewards of the game. There is no bias in there. I've been in there. Trust me. Um, they are just trying to call the game. In terms of this one, I could tell you that the that that guys like George Peros and uh, Damian, uh, who's the, who's been there since day one, basically built this department up in in, in Department of Player Safety. They uh, they know what they're doing. And so in this one, it was sort of unprecedented. And um, and uh, in the other ones, you know, I don't know exactly what was said during the conference calls with these players that caused them to maybe pick two games versus three versus one or whatever. But I, I'm one of those people that do trust uh, the job that those guys are doing. It's, it was interesting how all the moves the Capitals had to make just to stay under the cap to, yeah. to take this. So like 62 cents under. So Yeah, it's crazy. I mean, it's, yeah, it's, 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 like, uh, it's like uh, Chuck Fletcher used to joke that they're a Manny steak dinner from being above the cap. <laughs> so, yeah. What was it like to be at Cody McLeod's first AHL was, goal was, in 10 years? That was years? great. Yeah. Sitting there, and I said, wait a minute, that's Cody McLeod. I got to text Russo. Yeah, <laughs> that was good. I appreciate yeah. it. I got a scoop. Yeah, and then uh, Mayhew looked good. He yeah, had a power play goal the first yeah. th- on Saturday, and then he had a really nice shorthanded goal on Sunday. He split the two defenders and went right in and hit it mm-hmm. top shelf. So I that's just, definitely. I mean, at that level, yeah. he's just a sensational hockey player. Yeah, he's got. I don't think he's got anything left to prove down there. He's and he plays hard. Yeah, so, yeah. And yeah, I'll be interested. I mean, the Wild go on a three game road trip here. They just went to Arizona, where all of a sudden Luke Cunning got sick, so they they had to play a forward short that game and play Nick Sealer two shifts. Uh, as a seventh D, and so I, I just I think there's no reason they're not at the cap. So if I, for me, if I were Billy Guerin, I would call up a forward just to have just a minimum insurance on this road trip. Um, so we'll see uh, what happens here. Well, don't take him for this weekend because we're going down again. So, <laughs> but there's two game. I mean, he's got two, more goals in two, in six games than Donato has in how many games? Yeah. Well, what was it? I was looking yeah. today. McDavid has 20 points in the last eight games. Yeah. Wilds leading scorer is 15 yeah. points. <laughs> so Ouch. my last yeah. question is: With it looking like the Wild are going to get a top draft pick, um, I haven't really looked at the prospects, but I heard it's a deep draft. So who's the 
the top defensively minded third line <laughs> left winger.